Hi, my name is Makassi, and today, as you can see by the title, we're going to be talking about Rick Owens and Undercover by Jun Takahashi. First, you know, just grab a drink, you know, but if you're on the toilet, how's the poop going? Good? If you're watching on the train, I hope I will keep you entertained until your destination. So, this is gonna be a bit of like a TED talk, but like I want to feel like a conversation to know. So you're gonna participate as well in this video. We're gonna play a game, but you know, just settle it in. Let's just let just put some calming music right now, something serene. Like let's say let's put this one right here. Alright, that one's a bit too happy. Let's go a bit slower. Right here. Alright, that's the one. Alright, so First, let's play a game. I'm gonna show you three jackets, and these three jackets are gonna be from Rick Owens, and I want you to I want you to guess whether they're from the same season or whether they're from three different season or whether two of them is from the same season and one of them is from another season. I just I'm trying to prove a point, so I'm putting the photos up right now. I'm gonna give you like three, four seconds just to look around, see what you think. All right, so did you pick? Did you pick your answer? Are they from the same collection, or are they from three different collection, or two of them from the same collection and a third one from another collection? I am now putting on the result. Do you get it right? Do you get it wrong? Just keep track of your answer. Let's keep going. So let's look at shoes now. So same concept. Are they from the same season, or are they from three different season? Are they all from the same season? Are they all two from you know, you know the deal? Let's put the photo up. These are the Geo Baskets. They're one of Rick's most well-known pieces. So, you know, just have a look. Dissect it a little bit. Look at the color scheme. Trying to see the material you can. And, you know, guess, you know, are they from three different seasons? Or are they from the same season? All right, now I will put up the answer. So, you know, do you get it right? Do you get it wrong? Just keep track of your answer. I'm trying to prove a point now. Let's keep going. So. Now, we're going to look at Undercover by June. Same concept, let's look at three jackets. Okay, photos up. Just have a look. Take your time. Are they from the same season? Are they from the same year? Are they even from the same designer? Because, you know, I could I could trick you with that. I could put like a third... I, I could put like a jacket from... Um, I could put it from the Soloist. I could pick one from... What's another brand that is similar to Undercover? A um, Mastermind. I could pick. I could put a Mastermind as like a decoy. Did you, um, did you make up your mind? Got your answer. All right. So now I will show you the answer. And let's put that up. Like they look very drastic, right? But it's from the same designer, just from different years. They're they're a bit easier to tell apart, right? At least for me, anyway. I hope for you as well. Like they're very easy to tell apart. Like you can see three different themes or three different references. Now, let's look at three hoodies. So, photos up. Now, which one do you think is from Undercover? Which one do you think is from Rick? The third option. Do you think that one's from Rick? Excuse me. Or do you think that one's from Undercover? Pretty easy to tell, right? Obviously, the two left ones, you know, they're from Rick Owens. And the third one, they're from Undercover. Rick Owens, he play around with shapes a bit more than Jun Takahashi and you can clearly tell so let's say you remove all the graphic like you can still tell that the first hoodie is from Rick Owen because of the long beige drawstring that's one of his signatures and with the second hoodie if you are into menswear enough you can tell that like this is like one of Rick Owen's pieces because he's known for his asymmetrical zipper nature of it I mean, he's not okay. He's not the one that made it popular, but like at the moment, like he's been doing this for so long, like you can tell that it's one of his designs. Okay, so if you are anything like me, I hope you're not. But if you're anything like me, when you you look at a lot of runway shows, you know, if you look at enough runway shows, you can see the design languages, like design language of that designer of that brand. Some some are a bit harder to pinpoint, but some are a lot easier. By the way, I have this thing, like I think this this is this might be just me, but I prefer to look at photos of runways first 
over like the actual live stream of the video because I can safely say that most designers like their music taste is so different from mine most music that they use is so shit so I so for me I look at the runways I look at the photos first like look at the detail and then I look at the video see how the pieces move and I put it on mute because I just don't like their music okay you know what to pr to to prove my point further I'm gonna insert some clip from like let's say a rap Simon show like let's put that up Jello show. But do you see what I mean though? Like the music is so it's so far from me. I, I am into like Hosier, I'm into um, like all classic songs, like from Dean Martin's, um, Frank Sinatra, I'm a little bit into Louis Capaldi. Like the music taste between me and these designers, they're, they're just on total opposite end of the spectrum. But anyway, I digress. Today, we're gonna look at two brands, which I already stated, Rick Owens and Undercover. We're gonna look at some of their runway, we're gonna look at some of their pieces, and we're gonna analyze. So what I want is like what I'm positing in this video is that I I generally love all Rick Owen shows, but with me like with June Takahashi Undercover, like it's a hit or miss for me. The Undercover's collection they're so different, and I think I think most people share the same sentiment as me. There are Undercover collection that are more coveted, and then there are under like Undercover collection that people just not their taste. And what's beautiful about Undercover is that it's a bit more inviting, it's a bit more open for the general public or like an outsider to come into un the Undercover universe. There are multiple aspects to this universe, whereas if you get into Rick Owens, this is what you're gonna see, this is what you're gonna wear, it's not that inviting. Like, it, they have a uniform. And you know, like, with all these things, with all of these things that I just stated so far, it kind of made me question, like, why do I love all, if not most, of Rick Owens show, but for Undercover, it's a bit of a hit or miss with me. Like one season, I can really love it, and another season, I'll be like, meh. Another season, I'm like, that's not it. That's not it for me. Like could be for some other people, but not it for me. Now that we kind of posited this question, let's let's talk about it. So Rick Owens, he designed his runway. It's pretty uniform, like it just like there's. You know exactly what to expect with a little bit of twist, which I will get into later. But with Jun Takahashi, not so much. So first, we're gonna let's let's focus on Rick Owens, and then we'll talk about Undercover after. For Spring Summer 2020, the collection was called Taikoto. Taikoto. Um, it is an it Taikoto is the name of his grandmother's maiden name. It, excuse me. And his grandmother was of a uh, mix mixed tech. So uh, mixed text is a indigenous Mesoamerican people who resided in Mexico mainly like in that area. Um, so Rick Owens father, his father worked as an English to Spanish translator in, in the town called Porterville which he also had a jacket name after that Porterville but anyway um, his father worked as a translator and he worked mostly with um, farmers and defending farmers rights that is why you see um, these UFW, United Farmers Worker Associations, on this collection. I will probably put up the look right now, or has been already. You can see, um, so on the women's collection, you can see the Aztec crown in look 1, 4, and 5, and like in way more looks. Just go look at the collection. And um, the crown was made by an artist named Wintercroft. And um, in men's collection, look 22, it has a shirt with pyramid print or detailing on the front. I don't know which pyramid, but you know, let's be honest, they all kind of look the same. <laughs> Please don't come at me for that, but they do all look the same, you know, it's a fucking triangle. There's also sequence um, reference in this collection, um, the sequence is in 
the sequence is in reference of the China Poblano. However, like so there's like about 50 looks and I believe 20% of it was dedicated to his heritage and you know yeah his heritage with his Mexicanness. I hope that's PC. <laughs> I hope so. I don't mean any ill intent, but like, yeah, it just, it, he's talking about his heritage. And, um, but it's only 20% maximum, 10% of the collection. If there are, like, let's say there are 50 looks. I don't know how many looks there are, I forgot. Let's say there are 50 looks in this collection. 10 of them, or 15 of them, are like in reference to his heritage, but the rest of it is still like, we're going pieces. Like, I'm putting up the photos right now. Like, I'm sure you're seeing it right now. You know, you get the kiss boots, the tattling coat, the champion collab with the diaper button shirt thing, you know, the like the snap closure at the crotch, like those bodysuit that women wear as tank top and like they tuck it into their jeans or trousers. Um, the Bauhaus trouser, the wide legged trouser, the crop blazer, the Dylan t shirt with the exaggerated V necks, um, the shorts, the um, you know, the shoes, the boots. Like these are all the things that he has done before, but like he's doing it with different material. Or maybe like twisting it a little bit with different color, with a different shape, adding something, removing something. It's but it's like it's his design language. Like this collection, it reference it references his older collection more so than anything. I will put a clip up right now. Every new collection is just kind of a reflection of the one before it. So I'm kind of, you know, we've all looked at past designers, but I probably I study my own stuff more more than other people's, which is a terrible admission of some kind of ego, but it's, um, but anyway, yeah, that's how I kind of feel like I can make progress, by setting the mistakes and successes of my past. Yeah, so his collection is always like in reference of his older collection, as he stated in that clip. There's a, there's a uniform light to it, but like, not just one single uniform, but like, there's multiple, but you know that it's like a Rick Owens piece it's a rick owen outfit it has a uniform like design but like he improves a little bit of it you know like add a little twist to it or add a little improvement like you know whether it's material whether it's um like small nuances like the shoulder how prominent it is um the waist like how cropped is it stuff like that you know the detail the sleeve like the buttons or the placement of the button even or the placement of the zipper it could be asymmetrical it could be straight it could be like zigzag whatever you know whatever he can dream of so um let's talk about undercover now so with undercover june he designed like a collection typically after one idea one band one movie what type of music so with greg owens he designs he has like an idea or a reference but like he only put like 20 percent of that into his runway and then the other 80 percent is just like his usual stuff with slight improvement or you know like some nuance changes but with June, with Undercover, like, I will litter some example, like, in a second, but like, he did, like, 90 to 100% of it, it will be designed around that one singular idea. It's gonna be, whatever references he has, it's gonna be the whole collection, or if not all of it, it's gonna be about that idea. So first, let's go through it. So, for Fall Winter 2020, he designed it, the collection was, um, the big inspiration for this collection was Throne of Blood. Uh, so the throne of blood is a japanese classic from 1957 and this movie is an interpretation of shakespeare macbeth but instead of medieval scotland it's feudal japan and so um, for fall winter 2019 it was this whole collection was in reference of a clockwork orange which is also a stanley kubrick film it's very iconic stanley kubrick is one of june's like favorite filmmakers of all time and a clockwork orange is like one of his favorite movies or maybe you know he just watched it the day before he designed this who knows you know i don't have any collection i'm just a kid in his bedroom making these videos <laughs> but um let's look at some looks right now so you can t so you can see like the references like it's very clear so i'll shut up for a bit and i'll run the clip right now For his Fall Winter 2018, it was a collaboration between him and the soloist. 
So for his part, for his collection, he decided to design this whole collection around the idea or around the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, also by Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, let's look at some looks right now. Maybe I'll put the video up, maybe I'll put the photo. And you know, with 2001, like, June is also known to like, if he likes a frame from like a movie, he will literally just copy that and just put it on a garment. Like, you know, his undercover is more known for its streetwear aesthetic, and you know, with streetwear, it's a lot of like, um, logo, slogan, um, patches, artwork, you know, with Rick Owen, it's more about shapes and material and like, this idea that he's trying to present to us, but with June, it's very, it's more straightforward. It's easier to pinpoint his references where it's Rick. Like he doesn't really want you to see his references. Like he wants us to guess a little bit. I don't like mood boards. A mood board would just explain too much to everybody. I don't want everybody to know what my composition is about and where my references came from. And also, I don't want a literal example of my references in front of me. I like kind of having references that are vague that I kind of force myself to have to use just as a memory instead of a visual example. And so for me, what, what, I, what I've managed to like pin it down to two words is that it's the idea of having a uniform and having a capsule collection. With Gowens, you know exactly what to expect with minimal twists or oh, improvements. But with June Takahashi, each collection is so drastically different than the last. Like there is like June Takahashi's design with each collection, but it just, his references are so much easier to pinpoint and they're so much more prevalent that like you don't have to do a lot of guessing with it. It's like the moment you see like his 2001 A Space Odyssey collection, you know exactly that like he just watched this movie or it's one of his favorite movies as a child and he's just like, I'm gonna make a collection about this movie, about one of my favorite films, and I want people who are interested in my work to wear this artwork that is in reference of one of my favorite films. Like it's a lot easier to pin June Takahashi down, but with Rick, you know, you really gotta know, like, put him in doggy style and just let's ask Tyrone. I bet Tyrone knows more than me. But anyway, or Michelle. Yeah. So again, uniform, capsule, and there's pros and cons to each of it. There's pros and cons to each idea. So. For me, like I love Rick Owens. You should clearly tell by like ten thousand videos of that I've made about Rick Owens. So like for me it's very easy. So I know exactly what to expect. I can expect a better or a different improvement of like a similar jacket from this collection to the next collection. But if you hate Rick Owens, you're never gonna get into Rick Owens because like he's not gonna deviate from this design language too much. It just he knows what he wants to make and like he has an idea like it's a uniform idea it's singular but with undercover like you know if you hate a collection just wait until you see the next collection it's gonna be completely different however the sad thing about being a fan of undercover is that if you love a collection and you kind of want to see more he's not gonna design the same collection again so it's like it's so drastic okay so a good example of this is um, let's look at the collection spring summer 2020 this was honestly one of my favorite collections from Hems. Him? I don't know why I said Hems. Um, <laughs> and one of my favorite collections overall is like as much as as much fashion as I know. And I don't know a lot, but I'm only interested in a few designers. Like I don't check out every runway just to see what everybody's doing. I only I only check out designers that I like. You know, like J. W. Anderson, Chanel a little bit. I just want to see what Chanel's up to. Um, Margiela, I want to see what John Galliano is doing. Um, who else do I check out? Marnie, I like Marnie. Joe Sander a little bit, but not too much. It's sometimes it's a bit too boring for me. I like the row. Tom Brown hand there, just because I think it's funny. It's fun, not funny, it's fun. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. So, I love the fact that for spring 2020, the majority of the collection is mainly in black. Like, some of you may think like, Oh, that's so boring, because everything's all black. But then, when you zoom in, like when you zoom in on each garment, you can see the intricate details of, for example, um, let's look at look number five. Like from afar, it just looked like a simple black t-shirt. But then when you zoom in closer, you can see like the spider webbing design. Like it's, it's not printed. It's like embellished or heat pleated into the garment itself. So like you, you really want to question like how did the team do this? How did they came up with this technique. Um, look number 11, you know, like from afar it looks like a simple blazer, but then when you zoom in, 
like you see the Nosferatu and like and you know this this collection was like a big departure from his streetwear influence heavy collections like other collections like people still put Jun Takahashi into a box of like he's a streetwear designer so like with this collection like he focused more on the sartorial side he focused more on the tailoring on like he focused more on tailoring and material if you're a fan of his streetwear work you still get it you know the Cindy Sherman collab in this um, collection it's they it's it's tastefully done like I find that some of his other like really in your face streetwear stuff is like a bit too much for me but the Cindy Sherman collab like I felt like that was just like a good match and it fits really well into this collection and I don't know I really love this collection I wish I had more stuff from it like I wish I gotten this thing right here I wish I gotten this thing but it just I never I never got the chance to never got into it. anyway it's fine one day I'll own these pieces you know like June is one of the few designers that is like showing in Paris and you know for most most of the fashion shows that shows in Paris or in Italy in London like they're not known street but like people just associate these designers as like high fashion designer like undercover is one of the ones that always get the streetwear the streetwear like connotation next to it and you know with most streetwear brands they don't really present at fashion runways like they you know they don't have runway so Stussy don't have runway shows they just release things in capsules so undercover is one of the few if not yeah I'm sure there are other like streetwear influence collect, um, designer but anyway undercover is like the main one that like whenever people whenever people talk about undercover they're like it's a streetwear brand or it's a streetwear influence brand and I think with this collection for 2020 June is like hey man you know like, I can do this sartorial shit I can do this high fashion shit like, let's do this you want to see what I can do here we go but then like if you love that collection the collection that comes after it which is the 2021 the fall winter 2021 it's completely completely different it just it's the total opposite it just let's just have some let's just have a look at the collection real quick and then you can tell between 2020 and 2021 like how drastic it changed so quickly you know like the dichotomy between these two collections is just so so drastic i love the 2020 collection i wish you had you know done another collection similar to it but Again, with June is a bit more unpredictable. With Rick, you can sort of predict what he's gonna do with slight changes. Whereas June, like he can completely switch from one idea to the next, and it just. I really love the 2020 collection. I wish he had it done more. But okay, anyway, enough like enough talking about June's undercover collection. Let's just let's move on. So, but yeah, again, with with Rick Owen, it's it's easier to predict what's gonna come. You know, you can um, you will get items such as jacket with prominent or sharp shoulders. You can expect beautiful leather work. You can expect bomber jackets, down jackets, a bit of fur. Blazer with tight arms, and you know, you can expect new shapes, you can expect new material on a product that you love from the previous collection already, you know, deconstructed denim. And you know, uh, another idea is that um, Rick also rewards his consumers more so than undercover. Like, for example, let's say you love the Kiss boots, right? So, if you love the Kiss boots, he's gonna have them again next season in different color, different material. He kind of rewards you for like being a fan of him. Um, if you love his Bauhaus trousers, you know, don't worry, he's gonna release them again in different color, different material. Like, he, he will reward you for being a consumer of his, for being in his audience. With, with Undercover, you can't really expect that from Jun Takahashi. I love the 2020, but I got nothing similar to 2020, like from the 2021 collection, so it's just the total opposite. With Jun's work, like, you can, okay, you can obviously, you're obviously gonna get, um, hoodies with prints or slogans or like patches. June will reward you but he rewards you in a sense of like okay you love this season graphic hoodie you're gonna get another hoodie with different graphic next year you're gonna get a down jacket with like okay so for his 2001 A Space Odyssey collection he released this down jacket and then for his um for his what is it um the cloud was orange he released this down jacket so like close enough that like it feels like a reward for like missing out on this one but it's like but it's also different you know what i mean like but like he will reward you if you miss out on a down jacket he'll release a down jacket again just 
different print or different shape on it. And you know, like, there's really, there's no right or wrong answer here. Like, if you want your favorite designers to always, like, go out of their box, like, drastically out of their box, like, if they're normally here, you want them to be here, like, June Takashi Undercover, it's gonna be great for you. But, if you want a uniform light, a uniform light wardrobe, like, Rick Owen is a safer bet to go with because, like, it's it's a bit easier to predict of what like what's to come and like if you miss out on something, he'll release a similar he'll release the same piece, different color, different material next season, or if it's a big enough hit, he'll release the same one. You know, so as for me, as my taste and wardrobe has become a bit more refined, I can I can easily I can easily pinpoint what I like and don't like more like more so than most people who are experimenting. For me, I'm not really experimenting with colors or fabric anymore. Like, I know what fabric feels good on me, and I know what colors I want. With with regard to shapes, like, I still experiment, but with only experimental shapes. But, like, okay, if we're just talking about a t-shirt, I know what type of t-shirt I want. I want a bit boxy. I want the sleeve to be a bit long, so if it's too long, I can fold it. I don't like those t-shirts that have, like, really high sleeve or like short sleeve you know what i'm talking about i just i prefer my sleeve to be like somewhere here instead if you're still experimenting if you're still like early on in your fashion journey and you still want to like look into different designer or if you're having if if you enjoy having like a multitude of style in your wardrobe june takashi is a really good brand to look into because he will give you something dark one season and he'll give you something bright one season He'll give you something streetwear heavy, and then he'll give you something a bit more sartorial. But yeah, I kind of just want to talk about that real quick. Like, the idea of like having a uniform and like releasing capsule-like collection. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this little conversation that we're having, or that we just had. Take it easy on yourself. My name is Makasi. Thank you very much for spending this much time with me today. Thank you. I will see you next week.